intern. Welcome. Welcome to Coral Reef Zoo. Is this not just one of the most beautiful zoos we've had yet? I, I'm really happy we're here. Just the colors. It feels like a vacation. It feels so awesome. And our little turtles. Oh, and the water's already getting dirty. We're gonna really, I totally forgot about that. It feels like a vacation until we look down and see that the water's filthy and we only have three little creatures to mess it up. Oh my gosh, that is all the more reason that we need to try to do our best and get as many stars as possible so we can get some water filters in here. How did I, how did I, oh my goodness. Well, it's a very dark day intern. Oh my gosh, look at that. Uh, but yeah, how did that slip my mind that we would have to have water filters and until then you and I are jumping in here to manually scrub a dub dub and try to keep this entire big tub clean. Oh, there's social interactions going on. Hello little ones. What do you think? How you doing? Going to rest under the kelp bed. Good. Go doing good. What about you? Going to greet Olive Ridley, number two. Wonderful, wonderful. So it looks like those guys are getting along wonderfully. Oh, listen to the little noises they make over the noise of the seagulls. Oh, that's fantastic. But we actually need to hurry up. And now that the sun is rising in turn, we're going to try to get in a few more creatures into... Oops, a daisy. Okay, the bosses, like I was about to say, the bosses want us to open the doors. Right now we're at a loss because we've been spending money not making it. And you know how they are about those things. Ma Ma Maasai Giraffe Awareness Day is two months away and they would like all zoo members to have at least one animal of this species on site within the time period. Their promotional campaign will be extensive and if you have one of these animals in your zoo within two months, you will benefit not only from increased attendance, but also from $1,640 cash grant. Um, hmm. Giraffe, ocean, they don't really go together. We're going to turn this one down, as interesting as it would possibly be to have um, a giraffe at our reef zoo, we're not going to do it. Sorry, bosses. However, that's probably going to make the bosses pretty crankly. So we're going to try to go ahead and let's go through in turn and pick out a few of the fish that we're going to add into this beautiful pool and hopefully have swimming around very happily so that they can be a part of this multi-species attraction. And then after we do that, we can open up the doors, welcome in our guests, and start to figure out what our next step will be in the next animal that we want to add in. So let's see here. We do have these adorable tomato clownfish. They're very cute. I think, yeah, all of these animals are good to go once we start adding them in. So, you know what, let's just uh, let's go ahead. Maybe add a few females, perhaps. Uh, let's do one, two, three, four, five, and then maybe three males, and we'll see if these fish breed or not. Sometimes the fish get very fussy about breeding and things like that. The striped beak fish looks amazing, so let's do a little, little group of them. And we'll have to see if they school or not. Ooh, a red parrot fish. Don't mind if I do. Do a few of them. Ooh, look at how much bigger the male is. I forgot about that. The male will be much bigger as far as parrotfish go. <gasps> and look at the little purple queen. Oh, it's so pretty. Just imagine seeing all of these guys. Let's see, four, five, I'm just, yeah. I may, I may have a personal bias on how pretty they are. All right, there we go. And of course the blue tang is gonna be very necessary because people are gonna be looking for it. So we'll put in a couple varieties of it. A little clownfish. I feel bad because we don't have any sea and, like little anemones yet, so I might hold off on the clownfish because um, we really don't have what he needs. Harlequin turkfish. Let's go ahead and add in a few of these guys. Oh my goodness, I'm getting a little nervous. We're spending a lot of money on fish that I don't know if they'll do very well, so we probably won't add in too many more fish. Just a couple more, like the butterfly fish, because I know butterfly fish are always extremely common. So yeah, I'll add in one more male because we don't want to add in too many more in turn, and you know why? Because we're going to have to clean all of this. <laughs> we do not have the filtration system to be able to take good care of them uh, as we need, and a, a good filter system is, is a very, very important part of running an effective park. Oh my gosh, look at all of them! <gasps> look at all the happy little faces! Okay, all right, let's do this. And then we need to jump in and we need to see who needs scrub-a-dub-dubbed for a quick checkup. Yep, there's going to be a lot of that. <gasps> Look at how pretty you are! Where are all the other fishies? Oh, oh, there's the Olive Ridley. I'm sorry, I got stuck on her. Oh, dang it. Okay, where are we going? <gasps> Look at you two. Clean those two. There's another turtle. 
Oh, this is so fun. Replenish seaweed. Look at all of them. Oh my gosh, intern. Tomato fish. They're like hunting around. Oh my gosh. 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 Fish. Fish. Look at the reef fish. Oh, it's so pretty here. Oh, it's so pretty. The forceps fish. Look at you. Look at you, you parrot fish. You're huge. You're going the wrong way, my friend. Let me go ahead and help you. There you go. Into the water. That's right. Oh my goodness. This is definitely going to be one of the most beautiful of the zoos we've ever worked on. Now what we will have to do though in turn... Let's see if we can wiggle down here a little bit. Oh, fish, 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 fish. Fish, 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 fish. Oh my goodness, fish. What we will definitely... Oh, see the water's already getting dirty. Uh, what we will have to do is get some above ground aquariums so that we can have people kind of have a chance to walk through the exhibits and be able to see these guys up close and personal and not just from like an overhead view. Look at him! You're gorgeous! Oh look at you! You're coming straight at us! Look at those little teeth! Oh my gosh! Oh my gosh! And the parrotfish beak! Parrotfish have beaks and some species of parrotfish will actually switch their sex as time goes on so that the bigger ones will become uh, males and the younger ones are females. Something along that line. I may have it backwards, but they will, they will do that as an interesting way of having uh, like the strongest of the, the males be able to pass on their genetics and protect the younger females who are trying to harbor eggs. Alright, going to rest under kelp bed. The turtles are doing well. The fish are doing well. It's going to get really messy in there pretty soon. And let me see. I just want to add in maybe... Hmm. Let's see. Is there like... Ah, there we go. The spot of eagle ray. I think this might be a little bit small for a ray. And what would it need to eat? It would need shellfish. I think we might be able to fit... Oh, we really need to be careful about that. Splashy splash water is a bad thing in turn. Very bad thing. It might be able to fit... Yeah, it's probably big enough to fit one ray. So I'll put one ray in here. We don't need a bait ball. No, no, no. We don't need a bait ball. And does it need anything else? Nope. So we'll put in one spotted eagle ray. A little female. Well, we'll put two in I, I because they might get lonely. So we'll go ahead and we'll put two spotted eagle rays in and back up and let the splashing calm down. Now the cool thing about building for the fish, all right, and is everyone doing okay? Can you get in the water? Is it too shallow for you? Oh, look at you! Look at you! You're a dancing ray! There you go. Now you're off and about. So we're going to wade through this real quick. Look at all the little fish swimming around us. Oh my goodness, there's the kelp bed. Let's swim around the kelp bed. Oh, the Axel Charitable Foundation has declared your zoo eligible for their matching funds program, which is to help out newer or smaller zoos. If you can raise more than $1,500 in donations within the next 30 days, the foundation will contribute an equal amount to your zoo. Well, we can definitely do that in turn, but it definitely means that it is time to open this puppy up. So now that we've got the creatures in here, we are swapping to being opened. We are free on admission price. And we're going to come over here and let's go ahead and while the guests start to trickle in. Whoops. Yay. Yeah, we're working on that. So far you have raised zero of the $1,500 you need. Okay. Yeah. Don't rub it in our faces. We just opened the doors. We just opened them. All right. So let's go ahead and we're going to figure out. Let's use which donation box? The paradise, the paradise donation box. And that's going to be our theme for this particular zoo, I think, is this cool paradise donation box. Because it's a tree! It's a tree with a little treasure chest. It looks awesome. All right, we'll kind of sprinkle it around in a few places, but then we'll swap it up and we'll go, we'll go slightly more professional when it comes to this one with the underwater donation box. Is that like a fish head that you can like throw the coins in? <gasps> That's so cool! Feed me! Yeah, that would be awesome. I would totally do that if I was a kid. I would be like, oh, mom, dad, give me, give me a, like a dollar so I can put it in there. And every dollar counts when it comes to taking care of our animals in turn. 
All right, so next up, we need to make sure our guests are gonna be comfortable when they're visiting. So let's go with, there's the paradise benches, which are these right here. And there's also just like your normal safari benches or the little jungle bench. What I really like are these underwater benches, but they don't look terribly comfortable, do they? I'm not sure if I was like an old, old grandma bringing my kids, my grandkids here, if I would want to use that bench because it doesn't look so comfy. Um, endangered species bench. I'm so tempted to always use the endangered species bench just because it looks awesome. And you know what? I'm going to mix it in. I'm rebelling in turn. This is, this is me rebelling, using plants everywhere, as usual. All right, and then let's come down here. And we want some benches up here so people can kind of sit and be like, oh wow, it's so pretty. And we want some benches. Um, yay, people! Oh, I forgot the coastal birds. Yes, we'll add in the coastal birds in just a moment. Then people will not be able to resist. The charms of our park will be too strong. Too strong in turn. All right, I think we need to make the beach path just a little bit wider because I think that'll help us out with finding places to put these benches properly. All right, so let me see. Yeah, we'll put those there. And then, like, see, then we can put a couple back here. There we go. There's a person coming, coming to view the animals. That's so exciting. All right, so next up, oh, you know what we need to do? We need zookeepers. And we're gonna have educators. I want educators all over this place. All right, where are you going, sir? Hmm. Hmm. Can he not see through the big giant? Oh, look, he has a little map. That's so cool. Can he not see through? No, he can see through. He should be able to see through these windows right here. So, okay, we're good. He's just he's just trying to break in. That's all. He's just trying to, to infiltrate our park, even though we just opened up. Oh my goodness. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and we're gonna have an educator right here. <gasps> New objects are available for purchase. Fantastic, fantastic. And we're gonna go ahead and we'll have an educator right here. I want educators everywhere in turn. We're doing this right this time. Whoops. We're getting the educators all over the place from the very beginning so that donations can be, um, what was that? Oh, it's a little crown that disappears. Oh, that's so cool. Wait, can you not reach your, your podium? No, 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 no. What are you doing? Ah, oh, educators. They're, they're avoiding the podiums that are at an angle because they're, they're too special for that, I guess. Come on, go to that one. Come on, you guys. Oh my goodness. All right, well, the angle would have really helped to make things more comfortable. See, she's teaching at an angle. I guess maybe they just have to, like, figure their way out. Uh, no, Educator Kim. You can't go to your podium. Come on. All right, he's going to his podium. They're sorting it out. We have guests. Look, we have little kids. Oh, that's so exciting. All right, let's go ahead, and I'm going to put down some entertaining saber tooth cats. They can pretend they're trying to break into the uh, the exhibit to like eat the animals and things like that. Which, you know, not in a way that makes the kids sad or upset, just in helpful ways. Did I put in zookeepers yet? I don't think we did. So we'll put in three zookeepers to kind of manage some other things. And then we're gonna need a maintenance worker because we are about to put down some of the stands that people will need. I imagine it would be a little bit hot here and people are gonna want places to go to the restroom and they're gonna want places where they can get a drink. So check this out, the small paradise restroom. Isn't it adorable? So let's go ahead and we'll put like a nice little restroom spot right here. Let's move this tree fern over and we'll make a nice little restroom offshoot right there. Gotta make sure we always put the pathing under it and turn. That's a lesson from ages and ages ago. And then we'll also put a small paradise restroom, I think, back here. And there we go. Now we can move the little the little bench over here. There we go. Look at the little kids! Yay! I'm so excited. I hope they have a good time. And then as we start putting restrooms down, they're also going to want somewhere to eat and drink. And taking care of the guests is almost more work than taking care of the animals, I swear in turn. Alright, and there's also a gift shop option. 
we might as well be bold and just put the gift shop down early on and try to encourage people. Oh, see? They liked it. They must have given us a higher rating because now we have a whole star. We're already a one star zoo. Oh, this is fantastic. All right, there's also the aquarium with seahorses. I want people to interact with that, so we'll put that down. There's the island gift cart, so we might put some of those down in the future. But what I really want, um, we're gonna need some food places where people can eat. There's hamburgers, there's soda drink stands, there's the like whole all-in-one stands that we tend to get quite often. There's a water drink stand with a cute little beluga. Or a cute little uh, porpoise, excuse me. And let's see. What else do we have in here? Pretzel carts. So there's snacks for the kidlets already. Any ice cream? I feel like ice cream would be a good thing for them. On like a hot day like this. Maybe we can have like coconut ice cream. We can reopen the ice cream. Ooh, the coconut drink stand. Speaking of coconuts, why don't we go ahead and just put this puppy down just in case they want access to him at this stage. And a water drink stand. Um, the, ooh, the research for the aquarium with the seahorses is complete. I'm putting that puppy right there. All right, so let's see. What kind of food things should we put in for now? Should we go with the underwater theme? Should we go with the paradise theme? I kind of feel like going with the paradise theme. And instead of doing uh, food stands where we do specific, like uh, all the general items, it would, seems like it would be fun just this one time to do like specific items. And we'll swap it out in the future. All right, soda drink stand. Do I have a water drink stand? Water, water, water. That's sushi. That's soda. Mmm, that's, oops, the water drink stand, but not the paradise one. Aha, there we go. Water drink stand, there we go. And now they're going to need places to sit and eat. And they're gonna need somewhere to throw their trash away. So let's put some of those things down real quick. <gasps> Look, we can already get the paradise binoculars, yes. And the underwater binoculars. Go research, go. Oh my gosh, we're zipping up. Look how fast we're zipping up on all of the, the points, all the stars in turn, all the stars. All right, where on earth? We're gonna need that marine statue at some point. Oh my goodness, they're going so quick. I don't have enough time to like get everything down. Let's put down this paradise arch. Uh, I think I wanna move, let's move the aquarium with the seahorses over here actually. And then right here, we need to put down a bunch of the little paradise eating places. Also trash cans, very quickly. Where on earth are the, the little eating spots? Help, help intern. All right, here's trash cans, trash cans, ASAP intern. Feed the underwater trash can, or actually the paradise trash can. Oh, that's so cute. Paradise trash can, paradise trash can. There we go. That should help out a little bit. And we probably need to sprinkle some of those around though. So if you have any trash, please be sure to recycle. The research for paradise binoculars is complete. Woohoo! Underwater binocular research is complete. <gasps> the turtle is pregnant! We already have pregnant turtles. What did I tell you, intern? That took no time at all. Alright, where on earth are our little, like... That's actually a really cool sound. I don't think I've ever heard the hamburger sound before. I'm normally quite against putting things like hamburgers and things like that in, but... Let's see, common seahorses. Common octopus. Uh, underwater binoculars. What do they look like? Oh, they've got little, little, like, uh, rays on the bottoms. Hmm. That's kind of an interesting, interesting decision. I think I prefer the paradise binoculars. So let's go ahead. I'm going to install a paradise binocular right here. The kids seem real excited to look through them from the, these angles. So let's go ahead. I'm gonna put another binocular right here and right here. Oh, look at all the people! Here you go, guys, here you go. I think you're really going to appreciate being able to look in with these binoculars. Oh, uh, I just feel like all of our experience at previous zoos is coming into play perfectly for providing enough P words there for you. Ah, there they are, there they are, we found them. The umbrella tables. Oh, thank goodness. 
All right, let's get some umbrella tables down here. There we go. And I think we might need to move the paradise trash can a little bit as a result. Um, that's okay. We'll move it right there. Can everybody use it? <gasps> Two stars already! Intern, we are on a roll! We are on fire! On fire! And people seem pretty happy. And the only downside seems to be that the bathroom has a very long line. And the beakfish is pregnant. Well, we're going to be needing to jump into the water and make sure it's clean. How's the water? Hello, Olive Bradley. There we go. The red parrotfish is pregnant. We're going to have a very busy active zoo. Oh, this is fantastic. Look at all these happy people. Oh, this is going to go perfect in turn. I just, oh, this is exciting. All right, well, I'm going to make sure that I survey our guest. See that they're all pretty comfortable and happy, being educated, learning something new. Uh, the fish are getting pregnant left and right. And then we will be back here tomorrow in turn to start adding in some coastal seabirds. And once we get those done, we can start thinking about a few of our very first above ground aquariums. Oh, this is going to be fantastic. All right, in turn, I will see you later. Bye bye.